Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we shall be looking at the last spectral property for bounded self-adjoint linear operator. So here, if you remember that whenever we were studying about linear operators which are defined on the finite dimensional spaces, whether it could be a Banach space, non-space, Hilbert space, whatever it is, if it is finite dimensional, then in that case, we only have the point spectrum defined for that particular linear operator and both other the residual spectrum and the continuous spectrum, they are empty in that case. So that means uh, whichever spectral value we have, that is nothing but the eigenvalue of the corresponding operator in that particular case. This result we already know for finite dimensional spaces. But what about in general? result and in particular for this bounded self-adjoint linear operators. What can we say about this bounded self-adjoint linear operator? So this is the question here, right? So here uh, to answer this question, we have a theorem which is stated just for this bounded self-adjoint linear operators. So the theorem here tells us about the residual spectrum of the bounded self-adjoint linear operator. It tells us that the residual spectrum is empty in this case. So that means uh, if we divide the spectrum of, if we divide the spectrum of T where T is bounded as well as self-adjoint linear operator, then its point spectrum would be there, its continuous spectrum would be there but the residual spectrum in that case would not exist. That means it would not contain any spectral value for the given operator T. So this is the result. So obviously you see that is a very uh, powerful result that gives us a very beautiful property of this uh, bounded self-adjoint linear operator. So in that case, this won't exist for the bounded self-adjoint linear operator and its proof is also very simple. So let's move forward and look at, look, look at its proof. So here we assume that if possible, this residual spectrum is non-empty. So we assume that lambda is a, a spectral value which is a member of this residual spectral. So we'll prove the result through contradiction. We assume that this lambda is a part of residual spectrum. If that is a part of residual spectrum, according to the definition of residual spectrum, the inverse for the operator T lambda would exist, but its domain, that means the, uh, the domain of T lambda inverse, the inverse operator, that would not be dense in the given space, which is the given Hilbert space, right? So this thing we already know according to the definition for residual spectrum. Therefore, now we can use the projection theorem onto this, right? So for, for the projection theorem, if we apply this for the element y here, we would say we consider a non-zero element y which is present in the space such that this element is orthogonal to the domain of this inverse operator, right? That is what we said that its domain would not be dense in H. So it would contain some element Y, which is non-zero, which is orthogonal to this particular space, right? And moreover, what is the space, the domain of the inverse operator that would act as the range of the operator T lambda, right? T lambda is an operator which is defined from H to uh, the uh, h to h right so if we talk about t lambda inverse so it would be the inverse operator from this space to this space right so here you see if we are saying y is orthogonal to this space the domain of t lambda inverse so what kind of elements are present in this particular space is the question so let's see uh, which elements are present in this space. Uh, this space is nothing but the range of T lambda and the elements which are present in T lambda would be of this kind T lambda of X, where X is some member taken from the corresponding Hilbert space for every X of such kind. 
So that means if y is orthogonal to this space and this space has element of this kind t lambda x, so that means the inner product of y with this t lambda x would be going to 0. And because lambda is a real quantity and t is self-adjoint operator, so that means using the properties of self-adjointness, we can shift this thing to this side no problem in that and moreover we can take x to be t lambda y why because x has, uh, is a member of the, the Hilbert space h and moreover uh, this could be written as t lambda of y because if you take some member here and you apply t lambda onto it so it would be present here right so but the, here again the space is h so that means you could apply t lambda onto this. So we, by, if we take x as t lambda y, so this inner product would now become this inner product. And what is this inner product? It is norm square of t lambda y. So if this thing is zero, using the properties of norm, you know, t lambda y has to be zero. If t lambda y is equal to zero, what is t lambda? It is t minus lambda i. So we have t minus lambda i times y that is equal to zero. And if you open up this, you have t y minus lambda y is equal to 0 and moreover uh, you know y is a non-zero quantity so you have whenever y is non-zero we obtain t y is equal to lambda y here so here this implies that y is the given eigenvalue of the operator t this contradicts the fact that lambda is a member of the residual spectrum why because it has now become the eigenvalue of t so according to that this lambda should be a member of the point spectrum according to the definition for point spectrum so this is a contradiction because in the very starting we assumed that lambda was a member of the residual spectrum and not the point spectrum so therefore our assumption is incorrect and hence uh, whatever we have assumed we uh, we assume that this is this residual spectrum is not empty that is not true so that means it has to be a empty set whenever t is given to be a bounded self adjoint linear operator so i hope you got the result here well that is it for this video thank you for watching